Okay, here we go. All right. So now let's talk about moments. Okay. So if you have another situation like before, let's say we have some massive object here. Uh, here's our X, here's our Y. We can chop this object up into partitions about the X, partitions about the Y. And what we're really participate, participating, <laughs> part, Partitioning, whoa, that's called the brain malfunction. There we go. We're really partitioning this rectangle that contains this region D. And we're gonna, we're interested in what is like some differential patch here, okay? The moment about some differential patch of area is approximated by this. Okay, so then the moment about x axis is equal to. <coughs> Okay. Why is that? Well, the moment is defined. A moment of a particle about an axis is the product of its mass and its directional distance from that axis. So this right here is thought of as mass. This right here is its distance away from a directional axis. The y. So we typically call this mx, and my would be something like this. OK. But really, I'll actually write what one of these equals. It's the limit as m and n approach infinity of the sum of when i is equal to 1 to m, i is equal to j equals 1 to n of some y i j star rho of x i j star y of i j star some uh, delta a, which then that implies that our mx becomes a double integral about some region D of some Y, rho of X, Y, D, A. And similarly for M, Y. Not only that, but we can use double integrals to calculate centers of mass. So let's say you have some object. Its center of mass right here, x naught or x bar or y bar. We can calculate that given its mass density function. Your x bar is actually 1 over m double integral of dx. Actually, as you can see, it's 1 over m, uh, m y. And similarly, y bar will be 1 over m. And x. So let's do it. Let's find the center of mass.
So you have a situation like this. This is at one zero. This is at a zero two. I want to find this region right here, and this is our D. I want to want I want to know what x bar and y bar is. And we're given a row, a mass density function. Of that shape over there is equal to 1 plus 3x plus y. Okay? What we aspire to find is its center of mass. And we know that this is true. So, what the, uh, the things we need to find is mass and the moments of inertia about the x and y. How can we find mass? Well, mass, if this, mass is the area of this region because this function is a density function and when we integrate a density we get a mass because what ends up happening is density is mass or volume and when we integrate it, it's like we're multiplying times of volume to get a mass. Okay, which equals an M, which is going to equal <clears throat> right. And so this is then going to equal our uh, integral. So what is this equation here? It's a line with negative slope, negative two slope, and its y-intercept is positive too, right? So that's its equation for that one. So we can integrate from bottom to top, like so. And that's about the y. So let's break this down and say that this is the integral from y is equal to uh, 0 to y is equal to that function, 2 minus 2x. Two of our equation 1 plus 3x plus y dy dx, or does x range from ranges from 0 to 1 m. Okay, so I'm not going to do the steps anymore. That takes some time. So what happens is when we integrate with respect to y and evaluate, <clears throat> we get this 4 0 to 1. 1 minus x squared dx, and then we, when we integrate with that, we get this. And this evaluates to 8 over 3. Then is our m. So you guys can evaluate that. Given a situation like this, you can evaluate it. So now we know m. So the only thing we need to Calculate now is the moments of inertia about the y and the x. So let's do this. And similarly to this, they will involve integrals. <clears throat> they are not too hard to compute, but they are tedious and time consuming. That's fine. So x, so this one, it's 1 over m, so that's 3 over 8 when you multiply by reciprocals. And my. It's a double integral of uh, this guy. And then we want this zero to one. Same limits 0 to 2 minus 2x. Okay. So then what does this evaluate to? Once we're done with this integral, this evaluates to 3 over 8. Okay. Uh, so, yep. So, 
And then, so what about this integral? Again, this is going to be 3 over 8, double integral over this region. And so this is going to be y. And this evaluates to down here, 11 over 6. So there you have it. So So, on your next exam, just know how to compute these integrals. This is the kind of thing that I, I might provide formulas for. I don't want you to necessarily memorize these. Just know how, I want to see if you can compute those integrals. That's what I really want to see. Speaking about formulas in the exam, did you guys feel like you needed some formulas? I just feel like you got all the formulas that needed to be there. <clears throat> that could have been on there? Okay. I'll keep that in mind for the next one. So like the chain rule, you know, that one Chain rule, I feel like that's just something you should understand. It, I don't even memorize the chain rule, it just makes sense. So I don't consider that memorizing, but moments of inertia, <clears throat> centers of mass, that kind of stuff does kind of require. Okay. So let's talk about moments of inertia. Well, we were just talking about moments. Now we're going to be talking about moments of inertia. <clears throat> a particle of mass m about an axis has moment of inertia m r squared. So here's a here's a particle of mass m. This distance right here is r. The moment of inertia for that particle is defined as m r squared. Typically, you know, as I for the moment of inertia. But notice that it's nicely placed on the x-axis. We could have placed the particle right here. And then it would have some moment inertia about the x. And it would have some moment of inertia about the y. So we define the polar moment of inertia, just I, the polar moment of you just add up the two. It's kind of similar to how a complex number Z is equal to A plus B I, where this would have been A, this would have been B, this is the I M. It's analogous to that. But it's not the same thing. But I mean, it's analogous to it. That's why I reference it. So I'll just write I X. I X can be defined as um, the limit as m and n approach infinity of i equals 1 to m, i uh, j equals 1 to n. Interestingly enough, y i j star squared rho x i j star y i j star delta a. There's a lot of like 
scattered brain stuff in this section. And so for me to derive everything would take a really long time. So I'm just kind of having to say, here it is, moving on, here it is, moving on. Okay, and clearly this becomes an integral about some region B. And so I Y And so I is just add these two together. So let's calculate one. So let's say, uh, oh, yeah, okay. Let's say we have a disk D and our row of X, Y on this disk D is equal to some row constant. An element of the real numbers. Um, and the radius of the disk is equal to A, an element of the real numbers. And so we have X squared plus Y squared less than or equal to A squared is the disk. And it's that region D that we integrate over. Notice that in polar coordinates, which this is begging us to utilize uh, polar coordinates, and our R, ranges from being at A to zero. Notice that polar coordinates, it's called polar coordinates because it's like you get a pole and you sweep out any possible situations with that and surface, yeah, it is. That's why I think, you know, it truly seems like that's why it's called polar coordinates. You get a pole, the end of the pole has some paint on it. You smear out everything in all possible trajectories and it will create some shape. In three dimensions, it usually creates some type of circle. In two dimensions, it's going to create a, that's a circle, I'm at sphere in three. In two, it creates a circle. <clears throat> this is as opposed to cylindrical coordinates, right? And this is why polar coordinates is typically utilized in trigonometry because it's correlating to a circle. So, notice that when you add these two integrals together, it's the same thing as this. Okay? So, in our situation, this would be R, D, R, D, theta, where our R ranges from 0 to A, and our theta ranges from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. So when you integrate this, I will not go through those steps. This becomes uh, pi rho a to the fourth over two. Okay. So let's see how we're doing on time. That will determine how much I'll go into that. Okay. So, so let's say you wanted to, from that piece of information, because what, what we have, I shouldn't delete this. What we have calculated is I. But what if we want to know individually what is it about the X? And what is it about the Y? 
how could we do so with just knowing I? It seems like we only have one part here and we have two unknowns. What kind of a assertion can we make given that it's a disk and it has a uniform mass density? That's the catch. It's a disk and it has uniform mass density. What can we say about IX and IY? How are they related, if you will? Don't think about it as in terms of their integral representations. That's thinking about it the wrong way. The yes. Yes, absolutely right, Ivan. They are the same because you have a disk of constant density and it's ideally a perfect disk. And so it's a moment about X and Y should be equivalent. Very good. And so that equation can just be. And so we can solve. So dividing this by half. You can also extract those pieces of information. Okay. Last but not least, let's talk about some probability. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I have to answer a very important call. Problem set, which is going to be boring, but then. Hey, John, you What's the difference? College geometry one. No, me, I was just teaching college geometry one. You said it wasn't teaching that next to so. Well, he's got to because I needed to graduate. <laughs> Somebody got to teach him. I'm going to get out of here. Here's the, 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 the class. The class. No. No. I'm ready to graduate. When you graduate? Oh. May of 2022. It wasn't for student teaching, and the only thing they want you to do while you're student teaching is student teaching. You could graduate like a semester early, but student teaching is 10 hours. And so you could put like seven hours with that, right? But they don't want you to do that. So I'm kind of like stuck taking a 10 hour semester for no earthly reason. Yeah, is that even property is full time? Uh, supposedly, but I don't really think it does. Yeah, I it had to be like they might let it just because it's and that's the way they do Yeah, but um, 10 hours doesn't get you. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like a year because uh, next semester in 16 hours, 
And then the semester after that, I'm in like nine. So I need just some random class. And the next week I'm in 10. So if I could rearrange my classes to fit, like I could graduate a semester early because it just won't. Yeah. Next semester is going to be up, or going to end up, going to be end up. <laughs> the Lord is contagious. Um, <laughs> it's going to end up being really nice as opposed to this semester. This, this semester is bloody awful, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially on Thursdays. Like, I wake up and I just don't tell class until like 8 at night, usually. Yeah. Um, like, I like, don't tell for lunch or stuff or anything yeah. until then. Yeah, I have a semester like that as well. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, but next semester, since I got a lot of the stuff out of the way early, I think what I'm going to end up having is really not that many hours. I was going to say, you could probably graduate early if you can have a lot of credit already. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't really have much credit with physics besides having calculus beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, See, next semester is really nice. I don't think any day I have more than three classes. Yeah. Since I have, since I'm only like rolled in like nine hours next fall, like I only have like nine hours planned. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if I should take physics or if I shouldn't. If um, I should just want my senior year just to like chill. I mean, if you want to make nine hours chill. Like 12 <laughs> hours chill. I was say, like, I have three classes the entire week. <laughs> No, like Not talking about day. chill, but taking the like, whole week. like that last three hours taking like exploring leadership or something. Mm -hmm. Like some cool off. You can take uh, aqua cardio. There you go. Or private piano lessons. Yeah. Well, did you know they started selling eggnog already? What? Mm -hmm. At Walmart? Really? Yeah. Oh, oh that's what this is. <laughs> Not coffee? Actually, no. I bought three cartons of eggnog last night. <laughs> I drink eggnog once a year and drive after we decorated our Christmas tree. And then I never touch it again. Well, my family doesn't drink it. I found it from a friend of mine. And I was like, God, that ain't that's some good stuff. Yeah, I like eggnog, but in very small portions. I don't want to drink about like that much of it. That would be my favorite. Those are rookie numbers. Maybe, like, maybe, like, I, I'll drink maybe a third of a cup every time, like, not very much at all. Because it's so rich. Hey, you know, yeah. why don't you guys just drink the egg? <laughs> I would. Shots of egg. I would, I would, but it's not arm day. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I can eat a whole crate of eggs. Same. Especially if I, like, scramble them. No, I mean just. You just drink it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you? No. Did you not? Did you get used to it? Was it like gross at first? Or? No, I don't just drink it like that. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> well, what I do is I kind of like put the eggs in boiling water. Uh -huh. Well, wait here. Okay, so I put the eggs in water. You let it come up to boil, and then you stop it. You just take it off of the pot right as it's boiling. Then okay. it's kind of cooked on the outside, but it's still very liquidy on the inside. So it's basically like a boiled egg without a solid milk. Yes. It's halfway to a hard boiled egg. Yeah, but not even, I wouldn't even say halfway. It's probably like one sixth. I would say same, but on the inside. Yeah, and then you could just put some salt in there. It's really good. Mm hmm. That sounds good. Lots of calories. I must say, you want to bring some for the next 8 a.m. class? They, they only taste good fresh. Uh. So I have to bring a stove. That's okay. Which I think the chemistry department has hot yeah, plates. Yeah, let's say the chemistry department, yeah. they, they have stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm Right, yeah. Yeah, maybe for a friend. Sure. <laughs> Just remind me, okay? I will do it. I'll make it happen. But you got to remind me to do it. We could have asked for anything. Y'all are asking for a lot of things. I don't need any donuts. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I'm already well, stuffy. <laughs> well, okay, let's just, let's just say one thing about probability before class is over. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have studied any probability theory, 
But if you're given a function f of x called a, uh, it's called a probability density function, or as I like to call it, PDL, on a random variable x. It has the property such that x is greater than or equal to zero uh, for all x inputs. And this is true. This is probably like, I probably can't get, I won't get too much into these details because I just can't. But this is true. So what is this even talking about? It sounds really like mathy and technical and nerdy. But really, what it's talking about, when we're all nerds in here, so it's okay. Uh, so what it's talking about is that, let's give a random variable x. It could stand for anything, like, okay, given any random person, how many cents of change do they have in their pocket? For example, that's like a random variable. You, you, you go around class and you ask each individual how many cents of change you have in your pocket. That's a random variable, okay? A not so random variable would be like, what is the age of each individual? Because in this construct, college students typically fall under some type of window of rain, typically. So it's not as random, okay? So it's really gotta be a random variable, x. Uh, and your probability density function will create some type of shape like this, typically, depending on how it's distributed. And so if you take the integral from A to B, an integral measures the area under a curve, right? This is saying the integral from here to here is one, right here. And furthermore, you can find the probability that the value of the random variable lies between outputs uh, A and B, this would be equal to this. Yeah, for the sake of class period time, like that's all I can say. But I, 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 have a, I will assign problems that have to do with probability, because they're very interesting. There's actually a problem that will be on the homework that has to deal with the spread of pandemics. Hmm. Yeah, it's the I last problem on your homework. So you could use math to kind of study that kind of stuff. Yes, ma'am. It's called geometry. I don't know if it's college geometry. Let me check. It says geometry. It's like a 4,000 level class. Yeah, that's it. I am teaching it. You want to hang out with me again? It's required. Oh, it's required. When You're forced that? to hang out with me again. What time I, don't, I don't think it's going to be so bad, but yeah.